officials, Jerry Pollard, Gary Maxwell, and Tinio Petty. These teams met back in January 30th. The Frogs took that one, and they are on defense in their road purple uniforms. Home whites for Texas Tech. They control the opening tip. Both teams playing without their starting centers tonight. No Ude, no Warren Washington. There's the first turnover of the night. And here comes Trey Tennyson, one of the best three-point shooters in the Big 12. Both teams 7-5 and five in league play, 18-7 and seven overall. Here's Emmanuel Miller for three. Off the mark, offensive rebound, Xavier Cork filling in for the starting center, Ude. Pop Isaacs takes it away and gets fouled by Cork. So we'll take a look at your Texas Tech starters, and Grant McCaslin has used virtually the same starting five all season until Warren Washington came down with a sickness, and he missed the Baylor game, and tonight he's suffering with a bad foot. Well, he's got Robert Jennings, a sophomore. Grant McCaslin does much improved, really playing well inside. Here's Joe Toussaint, six and white. Soft touch, no. Offensive rebound, Williams. From his backside, keeps it alive for the Red Raiders. Great hustle. Both of these teams, outstanding rebounding teams, also great on the defensive end. Toussaint, two feet in the paint, kick out, Walton. Got it! What a transformation. Kerwin Walton left for dead, figuratively. Last season has become a mainstay. Really, what, Rich, one of the best shooters in the country. If you buy into all the analytics, Fran, he is the most efficient offensive player in the country. And we have our second foul of the game. That's going to go on Jennings. Take a look at Kerwin Walton, one of the sweetest strokes in college hoops. Yes, he does. He's shooting over 50% on the season behind the arc. And, Rich, we know that this team is missing Devin Cambridge. The Arizona State transfer. Well, when Cambridge went down in early December, you you saw this guy really step up. First free throw from Xavier Cork is good, making his first start of the season for Jamie Dixon. And he goes two for two from the free throw line. Here comes Toussaint. Now it's Jennings, two feet in the paint. Nowhere to go, walled up by Cork. Loose ball, out of bounds. And it's going to stay Texas Tech basketball. Thank you very much for those of you watching the Syracuse Oranges victory in ACC play. We're here in Lubbock, Texas, alongside Fran Fraschilla. I'm Rich Hollenberg. Another Big 12 battle deep in the heart of Texas. Kerwin Walton, an early two for two. Well, we just said it. He's one of the most improved players in the Big 12, and you could argue, Rich, the country. He shoots over 50% behind the arc, and that time you saw him get it done in the lane. Nelson off the window, an and-one opportunity for Jameer Nelson Jr. coming off a big win where he hit the game winner. Yes, he did. He, he hit a step back, and he's known for being a big shot maker. Take a look right here. Watch him get to the lane, draw contact, finish with the offhand. Yes, that's Jameer Nelson Jr., the son of the 14-year NBA vet, Jameer Nelson, and certainly uh, everybody in Philadelphia knows this family well. What an addition. Talk about key point guards in this league and in the country, Fran. These are three of them. Yeah, no question about it. And you, you throw uh, Dewan Harris in there as well. Toussaint and Isaacs, the two-headed monster here. Toussaint pulls up. Free throw line. Good early offensive rhythm for Texas Tech. Again, playing without starting center Warren Washington out with a toe injury. Here's Peavy. Pop Isaacs for three. 
And an offensive rebound for Jennings. Boy, Jennings doing the dirty work without Washington tonight. Here's Williams. He loves that corner three, not that time. And no whistle as Emmanuel Miller lost his footing in the paint. Boy, really good ball move early by Texas Tech. Side to side. Isaacs. Eight on the shot clock for the Red Raiders. Toussaint trying to do it himself. Left hand, no good, too strong. And Jennings, another offensive rebound. Taken away by Miller, but a foul's called. For those of you just tuning in, here's a look at the Big 12 standings. The top four are quality teams, but these Horn Frogs and Red Raiders are breathing down their necks. Jamie Dixon has his team looking at a third straight trip to the NCAA tournament. Texas Tech hasn't made the tournament in four years, but Grant McCaslin's turning that around. Yep, and when you look at these two teams, the importance of this game is they're building really strong NCAA resumes and also still in position for a bye. Well, and an offensive foul called. Rich, this league is so hard to officiate. Got three outstanding officials. You know, I talked to an official today who is active, and he, he referees this league and two other power conferences. And he, and he said to me, and this is not a knock on anybody else, this is the hardest league in the country to officiate because it's not just athletic players, it's good basketball players who are well coached and what has this league been known for the last few years defense and already you're seeing it these are two tough hard-nosed teams much like we saw last night here's jacoby coles inside miller his first two of the night well emmanuel miller is a, a guy that I think is a a, a first-team all-league level Big 12 player here in a couple weeks. Number of guys in that mix, but he certainly is as well. Leading scorer for the Frogs, 16 a game. Here's Walton. Watch how hard he's being defended. Chance McMillan, first time on the floor for him. Four on the shot clock. Kyron Lindsay. He's been called on for some extra duty without Warren Washington, and he produces. Well, this young man did not play very many minutes at all, but lately he's been in three of the last four games, and young man from Dallas using the glass. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. Visit Progressive.com. There are hundreds of different kinds of trucks and SUVs on the road. Meet the wiper blades designed with all of them in mind. Rain-X rugged truck and SUV wiper blades. Engineered with graphene for long-lasting durability. They're high-performing blades for high-performing vehicles. Rain-X. Outsmart the elements. Available at your favorite retailer. Teams right now it would be, I believe, uh, Iowa State, Houston, Kansas, and Baylor, I believe. Correct. They were, right now, as of today, they have buys, but there's a lot that's going to change over the next six games. Just three weeks away until we'll be in Kansas City. Can't wait for that. Lindsey misses the chance at a three-point play. It's a 9-7. Texas Tech lead. Ranked 23rd in the nation. Coming off a huge win at home the Good last shot. time out. Tennyson gets it to go. And I thought a uh, little discard there with the, with the uh, outreach of the arm created some space. But a nice job by Tennyson to transfer from Texas A&M. Corpus Christi. I like this. Two yep. shot. Yep. I like it. I like when you take it hard to the basket. The defender's either going to give ground and let you score, or there's going to be a collision and you're going to shoot two free throws. Good job by Tucson. 
Coming off a 16-point effort on the road at Iowa State. Miller, patience, doesn't pay off. Lindsay the rebound. Boy, Lindsay and Jennings really coming on at the end of the season. Here's Williams. Now Isaac, who struggled from beyond the arc the last number of games. He has. But that's an easy two. Give the dime to Kyron Lindsay. One of the things I've loved about this league is some young players did not play a lot early, November, December, and are starting stepping up around the country, around the conference. A near steal. Here's Anderson for three. No good. Offensive rebound. Chuck O'Bannon. Another attempt. And this time he makes it good. It's a two-pointer for Avery Anderson. Anderson is a kid that started about almost 80 games at Oklahoma State. Came back home to... Uh, Fort Worth area, great addition, great speed. And 10 on the shot clock for the Red Raiders. Here's Chance McMillan in the running for sixth man of the year in the Big 12. And Lindsay, another big rebound. Look at that effort. Look at that effort, both teams. I would have loved for Lindsay that time to get it back out to the perimeter and give it back to those guards with a 20 count. But that's just an experience. Fran, you were in Houston last night for the top two teams in the league, and everyone knows how tough Iowa State and Houston are. These two teams aren't that far off. No, they're not. We knew that coming in today. That's what excites me about being in Lubbock tonight. Here's Williams. Straight line drive. Kicks it out. Isaac, set shot three. Too strong. And Tennyson wants to run. This is the best fast-breaking team in basketball, but he lost the handle. Isaacs tried to leave it for Lindsay. The ball's out of bounds. Let's go back and watch what Tex gotten done early. Watch Toussaint getting downhill to the basket. No resistance. Good play. And then the, the freshman, Lindsay, watch this little backdoor cut. Great pass behind the defeat, the defense, and good... Uh, Hand development right there, using the left hand by Pop Isaacs. How about Kyron Lindsay? Listen, that's why you practice and work hard every day when you're a young player. You never know when your opportunity's going to come. Averaging five minutes a game, but he already has a bucket, a couple of rebounds, and an assist. Rich, we've seen that with the young man Jojo Tugler down at Houston. And uh, Johnny Furphy gets his chance in January. Now Xavier Cork whistled for his second foul. So he'll go back to the bench for Jamie Dixon. There's Ernest Uday on the bench, a former McDonald's All-American, and they'll miss his rebounding. They will. They can play small. Watch this guy. Every shot is right on the rim by Kerwin Walton. As some Mustafa grabs the rebound, they're going to call on him for some extra minutes. Now Peavy. Both teams excellently locked in defensively in the half court. Nelson pull up Jay. No good. Offensive rebound Mustafa. He had it knocked out of his hands. It's going to stay TCU basketball. Now remember last year, Rich, he's a kid at Coastal Carolina that averaged a double-double. He's not getting a ton of minutes this year, nine points a game, but a good security blanket as the third center for this TCU Horn Frog team. Grand McCaslin always talks to us about how critical rebounding is. How are they doing so far? Uh, well, they're doing like everybody else in this league does, which is if you don't rebound, you don't win. <laughs> Mustafa with the putback. Good effort right there. He's put points on the board in his career. Young man from Egypt. Ali Khalifa up at BYU. Isam Mustafa, two young men from, uh, from the country of Egypt in the Big 12. Here's Lindsey, guarded by Mustafa. Ten to shoot for Texas Tech. Lindsey found a seam. Oh, oh, what a follow by Lamar Washington. High energy play by the sophomore from Portland. O'Bannon, no good from three. Saved by Mustafa, but to the Red Raiders. How good is this intensity? Here's McMillan. 
And Fran, 10 of Texas Tech's 15 points have come in the painted area. Yes, Knight, look at that, just two more. And this time on the TCU end. Lamar Washington, a guard from Portland, Oregon. Scrappy, that's how I describe him. And this is the epitome of Scrappy. Watch him come into your picture. Everybody's ready tonight. Take a look at this, hanging on the rim right over PB. Wow. Move into fourth place because they have that win in their back pocket against Kansas. Exactly. Excellent execution both, both sides so far. Walton missed the easy two. Great backdoor action. Couldn't get it done. TCU's a team that plays four out, one in. They like to throw it into the post. Mustafa doing work with the left hand. Yep. Very patient in there. They'll play four out on the perimeter when they have Uday or Mustafa or Cork. They don't necessarily always play through there, but he might be the best offensive player of the three. He had four points in ten minutes in their win at Kansas State last time out. He's got four already tonight. Halfway through the first half. A two-point TCU lead. Don't leave him alone. A rare miss for Kerwin Walton from three. Notice how Jennings kicked it right out. Didn't even think about scoring. Isaacs. Got fouled on the three-point attempt, and he'll go to the line and shoot three. Well, we have an ACC-SEC Wednesday college doubleheader on ESPN in the app. Kyle Filipowski and number eight Duke taking on Miami at 7 Eastern. Then it's Antonio Reeves and number 17 Kentucky squaring off against LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. Uh, First, John, John Shire's team is going to try to erase a very bad memory of a 30-point loss last year, Rich, down in Coral Gables. And it's a different Miami team. I'm sure they're going to be ready, the Blue Devils. And how about the one? big win for your former roommate, John yeah. Calipari? Big win down on the Plains over Auburn. Now they got to keep it going because, I hate to say it, they're capable of losing at LSU. And certainly LSU coming off a big win at South Carolina. But we saw glimpses of how good Kentucky could be with that young team on Saturday night, dominating a good Auburn team. Pop Isaacs, an early four. And we are tied again at 17. The sixth tie of the night already. Nelson, nice look. Mustafa again. Oh, great penetration by Jameer. Under control. Draws to the big fella, and he drops it off nicely. You know, he's not Mike Miles, but he certainly is a reasonable facsimile. The great guard who's now at the Dallas Mavericks. Same speed. Isaacs. Tough two rolls off. And here come those fast-breaking frogs looking to push the pace. Tennyson. Miller had the offensive rebound taken away. Quick hands on both ends so far defensively. Nice pass. And Williams an easy two off the feed from Isaacs. A rich where 11 minutes in, I got to tell you, if you're watching at home, the intensity level on the court right now is incredible. It feels like we're in Kansas City already. It really does. It really does. And we know that feeling. These are two teams that can do damage in the tournament. Mustafa again. I can tell you, we didn't have this kind of offense last night in Houston. But part of that was two even better defensive teams, I think, than these two good ones. Last time these two teams played in Fort Worth, both teams hit double-digit three-pointers. That one taken away by Jameer Nelson Jr. And the foul is going to go on Pop Isaacs. We'll take a timeout on the floor. 7.55 to go. When we come back... It's good to be a surprise. Texas is playing better. They're going to give it, get an opportunity to win at Allen Field. That's rich. I told you. I think Kansas is on its on its way back. Healthy week off, two home games. Hard to think they'll lose any home games by the end of the season. Hard to believe that's the only scheduled meeting between the Longhorns and the Jayhawks yep. this year. The final one, at least in regular season, Big 12 play. Seven on the shot clock. PV. Scoreless so far, coming off a 26-point effort. Here's Coles. Shot clock running down. Offensive rebound 
Eman. And he puts it up off the glass and will go to the line for his efforts. Eman is such a competitor. He can score from the three-point line. He posts you up. He can offensive rebound. Just watch him on the backside. Excellent. Young man from Scarborough, Ontario. And actually on the other bench, about 40 feet from him is a guy named Dave Smart, assistant coach of uh, Texas Tech, who coached him on the, on the Canadian under-19 team just a few years ago. E-Man, he was telling me today, Coach Smart, E-Man and M Andrew Nemhart, now the Pacers, were his two best players. There you see Coach Smart. Used to be years ago, it was like one Canadian player would make a splash. I remember Tyler Ennis from Syracuse. Now there's tons dozens. Of, tons and tons, yep. That three off the mark. Remember, this is a resilient TCU team on the road, Rich. That's a foul. That foul is going to go on Washington. Neither team shooting it very well from outside. Combined one for 13 from three. All the damage being done in the te in the paint. And here's that road testing that so far Jamie Dixon's club has fared pretty well. Yeah, and keep in mind that this team is one of the oldest teams in college basketball. I think they're number three on the Ken Palm uh, experience rankings. And what I like about this team, Rich, the top ten players are all transfers. And we got to know them. Every one of these kids is a great young guy. Mike Peavy, one of them, but he misses that free throw. Used to be transfers, you taking somebody else's problems. Now we call it free agency. And every year there's what, 13 or 14 or 15 of them. Both of these teams will load up with transfers next year again. Four point TCU lead coming up on six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Two sock and one. We saw Joe go all the way to the hoop a little while ago and watch now using that speed, but stopping on a dime. Whoop, mm. whoop, whoop. I, he might have dragged that foot, but not enough for me to call that a travel. Watch this right here. Whoop. That's how they do it in the Bronx. Absolutely. Right across the Harlem River is a place called Rucker Park. And uh, Joe grew up maybe a half a mile from there. I know that area well. Isaacs and McMillan have been struggling offensively last three games. Joe Toussaint has picked up the slack for Grant McCaslin. He has seven tonight. Avery Anderson, number three with a three. Man, that's amazing because he is a career 30% three-point shooter and only 27% on the season, but... Playing with confidence, that's what that experience does for you. And Franny, that's the first Frogs three-pointer tonight. Williams, too strong. Coles the rebound. A chance for TCU to extend a four-point lead. Well, they really do push the, pa the pace. Here's Tennyson. Can't get that three to go. It was guarded. Rich, even with the two big guys out, one for each team, both of these coaches going deep in their bench. A win for TCU, and it'll be their fourth in their last five games, and it'll be their fifth win against the top 25 opponent. They're not ranked, and that's the only reason they're not ranked is because they play in the best league in the country, and they've been dinged a little bit. Nice pass. Coles left alone. Yeah, great job of sealing up the lane. And a great drop over the top by Peavy. Largest lead of the night for the Frogs. On the road in enemy territory looking to make a season sweep against the Red Raiders. Lindsay. Short. Yeah, see, Kai, I don't think he's going to finish over those bigs inside if he doesn't get an angle to the rim in my opinion he should kick it out he's not yet physical enough to score through the traffic of these 22 and 23 year olds 
215 pound sophomore out of Denton, Texas, by way of University of Georgia. Walton got fouled on the three point attempt. Tennyson has played a lot of basketball. He can't invade that shooter's face. Nobody knows that better than him or his coach. <laughs> He's telling him. J.B. Dixon took this job over in March of 2016. Came back to his alma mater. And it, of course, he did an amazing job at Pitt. And the time was right. Big 12. Admission by TCU. And boy, what a job he's done back at his alma mater. In Jamie's tenure in Fort Worth, five road wins against five top 25 teams looking to make it six with a victory tonight you know he had a few of those in the big east too that's Rich, right you know more than a, more than five i guarantee you being a syracuse alum i remember some of those hey, yeah right they 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 were one of the very few teams that carved up that two three zone walton goes three for three slicing the tcu lead in half 28 25 under five minutes to go in the first half Here's Peavy, still scoreless. Tip ball. And here comes Texas Tech. They could tie it with a three. Isaacs got a mismatch with the bigger Coles on him. Ten to shoot. Oh, yeah. He wanted it. Air ball saved by Miller. Pop's been struggling with the shooting. And he's got to keep playing. And I don't know if they'll count that as a fast break basket, but it should count. Coles for two. Well, they get out so quick. They've got multiple guys in that backcourt. They got Nelson and Anderson out there together, the two fastest players on the team. Number one in the nation in fast break points, and no one really is even close. And that foul is going to go on Jacoby Coles, his second. We'll take a timeout. Our final media timeout of the first half. TCU with a five-pointer. That finally, one of the great memories of Mac McClung's short but impactful career here in Lubbock. That one taken away by Toussaint. Yeah, just slipped out of Avery's hands. Making a concerted effort to get it inside. That time they couldn't thread the needle. And O'Batten tried to split the defense. And a foul is called. Well, we have five college basketball games coming up on Saturday on ESPN starting in Noon Eastern. We're highlighting these three for you. Two top teams in the ACC squaring off at 4 Eastern. Number 10 UNC hosting Virginia. Then it's Texas and number 9 Kansas. And at 8 Eastern, two SEC, SEC teams getting after it. Number 5 Tennessee hosting Texas A&M. And, uh, and uh, Tennessee was in a dogfight at Missouri. I think they pulled away. And A&M was losing at home to Arkansas, a team that has really struggled this year. Big surprise. Texas is playing better. They're going to give it, get an opportunity to win at Allen Field. Us, Rich, I told you, I think Kansas is on its on its way back. Healthy, week off, two home games. Hard to think they'll lose any home games by the end of the season. Hard to believe that's the only scheduled meeting between the Longhorns and the Jayhawks yep, this year. The final one, at least in regular season, Big 12 play. Seven on the shot clock. Peavy. Scoreless so far. Coming off a 26-point effort. Here's Coles. Shot clock running down. Offensive rebound. Eman. And he puts it up off the glass and will go to the line for his efforts. Eman is such a competitor. He can score from the three-point line. He posts you up. He can offensive rebound. Just watch him on the backside. Excellent. Young man from Scarborough, Ontario, and actually on the other bench, about 40 feet from him is a guy named Dave Smart, assistant coach of uh, Texas Tech, who coached him on the, on the Canadian under-19 team just a few years ago. E-Man, he was telling me today, Coach Smart, E-Man and M Andrew Nemhart, now the Pacers, were his two best players. 
There you see Coach Smart. Used to be years ago, it was like one Canadian player would make a splash. I remember Tyler Ennis from Syracuse. Now there's tons dozens. And, tons and tons, yep. That three off the mark. Remember, this is a resilient TCU team on the road, Rich. That's a foul. That foul is going to go on Washington. Neither team shooting it very well from outside. Combined one for 13 from three. All the damage being done in the te in the paint. And here's that road testing that so far Jamie Dixon's club has fared pretty well. Yeah, and keep in mind that this team is one of the oldest teams in college basketball. I think they're number three on the Ken Palm uh, experience rankings. And what I like about this team, Rich, the top ten players are all transfers. And we got to know him. Every one of these kids is a great young guy. Mike Peavy, one of them, but he misses that free throw. Used to be transfers, you taking somebody else's problems. Now we call it free agency. And every year there's, what, 13 or 14 or 15 of them. Both of these teams will load up with transfers next year again. Four-point TCU lead coming up on six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Two shots and one. We saw Joe go all the way to the hoop a little while ago. And watch now using that speed, but stopping on a dime. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I, he might have dragged that foot, but not enough for me to call that a travel. Watch this right here. Whoop. That's how they do it in the Bronx. Absolutely. Right across the Harlem River is a place called Rucker Park. And uh, Joe grew up maybe a half a mile from there. I know that area well. Isaacs and McMillan have been struggling offensively last three games. Joe Toussaint has picked up the slack for Grant McCaslin. He has seven tonight. Avery Anderson, number three with a three. Man, that's amazing because he is a career... 30% three-point shooter and only 27% on the season, but playing with confidence, that's what that experience does for you. And Franny, that's the first Frogs three-pointer tonight. Williams, too strong. Coles the rebound. A chance for TCU to extend a four-point lead. Well, they really do push the, pa the pace. Here's Tennyson. Can't get that three to go. It was guarded. Rich, even with the two big guys out, one for each team, both of these coaches going deep in their bench. A win for TCU, and it'll be their fourth in their last five games, and it'll be their fifth win against the top 25 opponent. They're not ranked, and that's the only reason they're not ranked is because they play in the best league in the country, and they've been dinged a little bit. Nice pass. Coles left alone. Yeah, great job of sealing up the lane. And a great drop over the top by Peavy. Largest lead of the night for the Frogs. On the road in enemy territory looking to make a season sweep against the Red Raiders. Lindsay. Short. Yeah, see, Kai, I don't think he's going to finish over those bigs inside if he doesn't get an angle to the rim in my opinion he should kick it out he's not yet physical enough to score through the traffic of these 22 and 23 year olds 6 8 2 15 pounds sophomore out of denton texas by way of university of georgia walton got fouled on the three-point attempt Tennyson has played a lot of basketball. He can't invade that shooter's face. Nobody knows that better than him. Or his coach. <laughs> He's telling him. Jamie Dixon took this job over in March of 2016. Came back to his alma mater. And of course, he did an amazing job at Pitt. And the time was right. Big 12. 
Admission by TCU, and boy, what a job he's done back at his alma mater. In Jamie's tenure in Fort Worth, five road wins against five top 25 teams. Looking to make it six with a victory tonight. You know, he had a few of those in the Big East, too, That's Rich. right. You know, more than, more than five, I guarantee you. Being a Syracuse alum, I remember some of those. Hey, yeah, right. They, 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 they were one of the very few teams that carved up that 2-3 zone. Walton goes three for three, slicing the TCU lead in half. 28-25, under five minutes to go in the first half. Here's Peavy, still scoreless. Tip ball, and here comes Texas Tech. They could tie it with a three. Isaacs got a mismatch with the bigger Coles on him. Ten to shoot. Oh, yeah. He wanted it. Air ball. Saved by Miller. Pop's been struggling with the shooting. And he's got to keep playing. And I don't know if they'll count that as a fast break basket, but it should count. Coles for two. Well, they get out so quick. They've got multiple guys in that backcourt they got nelson and anderson out there together the two fastest players on the team number one in the nation in fast break points and no one really is even close and that foul is going to go on jacoby coles his second we'll take a timeout our final media timeout of the first half tcu with a five-point lead ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because you know that just because it fits in the cup holder doesn't make it to go. And you know how to break... Ah! Without breaking everything. And you're definitely not doing... Okay, I don't even know what this is, but you're definitely not doing that. With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. True story. A trifecta of rivalry games can heat up the winner blues. This is going to be a fight all night long. First, number four, Houston faces number eight, Kansas. There's nowhere better than Allen Fieldhouse. Nowhere. Then it's round one of Duke, Carolina. The best rivalry in college basketball. And number five, Tennessee, takes on number ten, Kentucky. Boy, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Experience the blockbuster triple header today on ESPN. Your shipping manager left to find themselves, leaving you lost. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. You can make money the hard way as a bullfighter or a human cannonball or save money the easy way with Xfinity Mobile. Existing customers can get a free line of our most popular and limited plan for a year. Not only will you save hundreds, but you'll also be joining millions who have connected to America's most reliable 5G network. Sure is a lot safer than becoming a stuntman for money. Get a free line of unlimited intro for a year when you buy one unlimited line. Plus, get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 on us. There's a number of teams that I can go that can get to the Sweet 16. Iowa State proved last night that they can play with anybody. 
I think a team like TCU who's knocked on the door of advancing deeper in the tournament can certainly do that. They had Arizona beat a couple years ago. They played great against Gonzaga last year, and they've got a lot of experience. Another three-pointer from Avery Anderson, who has 10. Well, as I said earlier, Avery has spent four years in the Big 12, so he's been in this building. Nothing phases him, but that backcourt with him and Jameer Nelson really gives you excellent speed and versatility and also really good defensive pressure. Texas Tech, their largest deficit of the night now is eight. Struggling from the field, just nine of 27. Toussaint, he's had a hot hand though, and he gives it to the TCU bench after that make. They really needed that to stem that momentum, but remember, this team trailed BYU by 16 at the half. Nice. Anderson again in an and one opportunity. Well, what we're seeing right now is Avery Anderson's speed. And let's go back and watch Joe Toussaint. They know they needed a basket. Watch Joe knock it down and take a look as he makes this shot. And a little Bronx action right there. But Avery Anderson from Justin, Texas, which is about, I think, Jerry Powers just... Uh, Having a little talk with Joe, sportsmanship. You know, I talked to Jerry Pollard once, and I said, Jerry, do you ever get intimidated out, out here at these big arenas? He said, Fran, I wore a uh, bulletproof vest for much of my police career. No, I don't. He was a captain on the SWAT team in St. Charles County, Missouri. And he has a great way with these kids. McMillan. Tough two from Chance, his first bucket of the night. Rich, we were here when they trailed BYU by 16 and came back and won, but they've got to do a better job at a defensive end right now. Peavy for three. He has not had the hot hand that he's had the last few games. Walton left alone. Corner three. Got it! There's a number of teams that I can go that can get to the Sweet 16. Iowa State proved last night that they can play with anybody. I think a team like TCU, who's knocked on the door of advancing deeper in the tournament, can certainly do that. They had Arizona beat a couple years ago. They played great against Gonzaga last year, and they've got a lot of experience. Another three-pointer from Avery Anderson, who has 10. As I said earlier, Avery has spent four years in the Big 12. So he's been in this building. Nothing phases him. But that backcourt with him and Jameer Nelson really gives you excellent speed and versatility and also really good defensive pressure. Texas Tech, their largest deficit of the night now is eight. Struggling from the field, just nine of 27. Toussaint, he's had a hot hand, though. And he gives it to the TCU bench after that make. They really needed that to stem that momentum. But remember, this team trailed BYU by 16 at the half. Nice. Anderson again in an and one opportunity. Well, what we're seeing right now is Avery Anderson's speed. And let's go back and watch Joe Toussaint. They know they needed a basket. Watch Joe knock it down and take a look as he makes this shot. And a little... Bronx action right there, but Avery Anderson from Justin, Texas, which is about, I think Jerry Powers just uh, having a little talk with Joe, sportsmanship. You know, I talked to Jerry Powers once, and I said, Jerry, do you ever get intimidated out, out here at these big arenas? He said, Fran, I wore a uh, bulletproof vest for much of my police career. No, I don't. He was the captain on the SWAT team in St. Charles County, Missouri. And he has a great way with these kids. McMillan, tough two from Chance, his first bucket of the night. Rich, we were here when they trailed BYU by 16 and came back and won, but they've got to do a better job at a defensive end right now. Peavy for three. He has not had the hot hand that he's had the last few games. Walton left alone. Corner three. Got it! Yeah. 
and we play on. Pop Isaacs at the line, cans the first of the two technical free throws. Had one of the best games of his young career against TCU when they met in Fort Worth. 25 points, 9 assists. And he missed that one. Oh, he made that, rather. And now we're tied at 38. And a chance for Texas Tech to take a lead going to the half. Now, if you want to go two for one here and get two possessions, you want to shoot this ball by about 40 to 42 seconds. There it is. Walton, quick three. Well, quick because it was the two for one, Rich. Coles taking his time doesn't pay off but they get it back ball didn't hit the rim 10 on the shot clock O'Bannon around and out battle for the boards won by Walton shot clock's off 15 seconds to go Texas Tech, their largest lead was only four. We have had eight ties, and it's tied starting the second half. Here's Darian Williams into the paint. Can't get it to go. Offensive rebound, Jennings. But he lost it. Here come the Frogs. Oh, well, they're pushing it. Just couldn't connect. These frauds can run. Here's Isaacs. Nice pass. Jennings couldn't finish. But he does there. Good job of Isaacs getting in deep. Guards on both teams in this game have done a really good job of getting the ball into the lane off the dribble. Good floor game tonight from Pop Isaacs. Not yeah. scoring a lot. Well, he's playing injured. He's wearing, it, wearing out a little bit big time. There's a big three from the corner. Jameer Nelson Jr. I, I love what Jamie Dixon has done. Back in the starting lineup. And then when he brings Anderson in, he's got another speed demon. It's like having two co-pilots. And you said you're seeing that a lot in the Big 12. Well, this year. it's always been part of basketball. I love it because it takes pressure off both of them at the same time. It's like flying a plane. Williams, turnaround. Short. Here's Peavy. Scoreless in the first half. Mustafa, what a game he's having. Essa Mustafa in double digits. He plays below the rim, but he uses his girth and that dribble to back you in, and then he could shoot it over both shoulders. Now matching his season high already, and we've just started the second half. This place is quiet, Rich. Now, I haven't seen Robert Jennings make that shot all season. If I were him, I'd just get that ball out to those scorers. Miller in traffic, no good. Here comes Williams. The Jennings has got a guard on him. Skip pass. Pop for three. Boy, Pop can't buy one. And we've got a shot clock issue. So time stops with 17-16 to go. One thing that surprises me, i got to tell you, you know, for a three-point deficit, this place is quiet. Now, again, what we're watching is a TCU team is very comfortable playing on the road. TCU, one of just a small handful of teams who have three road wins. They would be the first to four. Of course, Baylor has three road wins there in Provo right now playing BYU. Exactly. And there's some tough road wins ahead. Trust me. In this league, Houston goes to Baylor on Saturday. 
Nelson kept the dribble, got the bucket. Using that grown man strength bench right there. They put those muscles up for that drive by Nelson. That was a play where there was contact. And, uh, you know, TCU fans complaining about contact in the first half. These officials have let both teams play. Shooter, Tennyson. Can't get it to go. Miller offensive rebound. See how poised Mustafa is, Rich? The pull up from Nelson, no good. Things a little uneven offensively to start, but TCU has built a five point lead with 16 20 to go. Now Avery Anderson back on the floor as Emmanuel Miller. But, boy, Mustafa, without Washington in the defensive paint there, has really done a good job tonight. Peavy met at the rim by Lindsay. Find a shooter. That's a shooter. And just like that, the USA crowd back into it. Yep. Got a feeling this is going to be all night long in the last 15 minutes. Bad pass from Anderson. Out of bounds. It'll stay TCU basketball. Floor burns to spare here inside the United Supermarkets Arena as we take a break. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive is brought to you. Very, very uh, aggressive. You know, a lot, of, a lot of physical play, but these two teams are built on that. We've had eight ties and three lead changes, and still a lot of basketball left to play. The foul called before the shot. All right, let's see. He might have had him going up, Rich. Yep, yep. It he looks is. like he is. Number yep. two, Emmanuel Miller will go to the line. Tip off your weekend with our next NBA Friday doubleheader. Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs are now a two seed in the East. They host the Sixers at 7.30 Eastern. Then Giannis and the Bucks play the second game of a three-game road trip against Anthony Edwards. And the T-Wolves are coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the app. Cavaliers, the T-Wolves, two of the league surprises this year. Yeah. T-Wolves, number one in the West. Yeah, Anthony Edwards, Cat Towns, deep bench, Chris Finch has got that thing going. And so does J.B. Bickerstaff coaching those Cleveland Cavaliers. Good to see you know what's great about a night like tonight in a game like this one? Both teams are shooting miserably from three-point line yeah. and still a fantastic, entertaining game. I agree. I agree. You know, you're not going to – both teams said to us today, we're playing a good shooting team. We're not going to give them the three ball. But what both teams are doing is attacking the paint without each other starting center. Right there. Miller. Oh, he's so good. Another two. He's so good, Emmanuel Miller. I, I haven't figured out my all Big 12 team because we got a lot of basketball left. Obviously, Shed, McCullough, Dickinson, they're probably locks. But I think at Max Aismas and Emmanuel Miller, they're, they're two of my favorites right now. Already a double double for number two in purple, Emmanuel Miller. And here he is looking to add to the total. Sweet. And he does. A dozen for Emmanuel Miller. Uh, this guy has been here in Fort Worth. He's in Lubbock tonight, obviously. But three years at TCU. Plays with a smile on his face. Plays with great physicality. Then there you see the athleticism in the open court. Takes the bump. And uh, going to go to the line. Great young man. Little brother Leonard Miller is uh, on his way to being a good NBA player. And you see Emmanuel Miller's sparkling numbers tonight, but... He's grabbing that left foot after that collision under the basket. Collision, a very common word used in Big 12 regular season play. You see what Emmanuel Miller sees, but he still <laughs> knocks down the free throw, giving him a Baker's dozen, and he'll take a seat, rest that foot. 
TCU gives that an award after every game. BTF, the big tough frog. He is one tough frog. He sure is. There's a team full of them. Good look. Toussaint to Walton. Pretty good odds when he's wide open, folks. Lindsay, another rebound. Numbers. See if they try to find Kerwin again. There he is with the touch. Now Lindsay from the elbow. Left hand, short. Avery Anderson at 13 in the first half. Two off his season high. Taken away by Walton. McMillan for three. Empty. Yeah, and I think Chance was too much on the move there. He didn't get his feet set. You don't mind that three-point shot in transition, but I don't think he felt comfortable releasing it when he, when he was moving to his left. Oh, and Coles missed the bunny. And they should push it because they have numbers with Coles down. Isaacs goes right at Coles and gets two. And Jamie Dixon wants to talk it up too to TCU 52-50. This is a Texas Tech team, Fran. That's 13 and 1 at home this year. Yes, they are. And they are playing without Warren Washington tonight, but no Uday for TCU. Again, veteran TCU team, one of the oldest and experienced teams in the country. Nelson for three oh, out man. of the timeout. How good has Jameer Nelson been lately, not just tonight? Getting back into the starting lineup. And what a what a year he's having. He had some, you know, issues. And when I say issues, uh, he didn't play inconsistent basketball for a few games, but has really, really a, a accepted his role. And his role's a big role on this team. And he's come up huge, especially on the road. That triple overtime game at Baylor, he was huge with 30 points and hit the game winner. Yeah. This past win at Kansas State. Big rebound by McMillan. Fresh 20. Kerwin Walton. Can't knock that triple down. And bodies and shoes and headbands go flying. No harm, no foul there. Both players hit the ground. I, I got to tell you, the thing that impressed me about Jameer is that for much of his career at GW, Delaware, he's been a scorer, but he, he gives you both. He gives you playmaking ability and a scoring ability. Shot clock running down. That one didn't touch anything out of bounds. Texas Tech basketball will step aside for a quick timeout. Come on back to United Supermarkets Arena. Ten man team, all transfers. The egoless way they play is impressive. Remember, Jameer averaged 21 last year. McMillan gets fouled on his way to the hole out of the timeout. You know, it feels to me like TCU's got control of this game, but it's only a five-point game. It's been played in a very tight window tonight. Texas Tech led TCU on the road by double digits. I think it by as many as 12 in Fort Worth a month ago, only to have TCU come back and win that game. You know, one thing is I'm looking at Chance McMillan at the foul line. When you think of McMillan... Toussaint, Isaacs, Walton, Darian Williams, they are, and Warren Washington, they're all having career years mm. for uh, first year head coach Grant McCaslin. Well, what did Grant tell us? He wanted to bring in transfers who had NCAA tournament experience. Yep. Peavy has not had the range tonight. Texas Tech could tie with a three. Well, there's a lot of contact in there. Tennyson. Yep, had to call it. And Jerry Pollard was 
Johnny on the spot with that one. That's going to be Tennyson's third. Yeah, Tennyson is guarding a center. And a little UFC action down here. They let the first little bump go, and then you just have to call that. And uh, easy. So Tennyson to the bench with those three fouls. Here's Pop. And just like Mike Peavy struggling tonight, so is Pop from the field. That foul's going to be on the floor on McMillan, his second. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans because you can find every game of the Phillips 66 Big 12 Men's Basketball Tournament there. It begins Tuesday, March 12th at the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash big hyphen 12. I don't know about you, March 11th, I'm going to the women's semifinals, and then the championship game will be the night of the 12th. First time that they've uh, spread the tournament out. Roughly two great weeks of basketball in Kansas City. And you and I will be there for that new first-round games, two of them, on March 12th, Tuesday morning. We'll do two of them. We'll go get some barbecue, and we'll go back for the women's <laughs> championship. And it is going to be spectacular, yeah. as it usually is. Kansas City does have some great barbecue. I don't oh. know if it's as great as Evie Mays, Evie? but it's pretty great. Thank you, Mallory. We had a great meal today. Great barbecue here in Lubbock. And some yeah. great basketball as well. Good ball movement, side to side, four out. Rebound, Lindsey. Good job by Lindsey. This kid was not playing very much. And here come the Frogs. The lob. And an easy two from Micah Peavy. That's that fast break offense we talk about. They get about 20 points a game. Best in the country. And they've got a strength coach on that bench, Gary Christopher, who tortures these guys in the summertime in that Fort Worth heat, and that's why they can run all day. How do you get these guys to run so much? Well, they got a great strength coach. He's second from the end on that bench down there, Gary Christopher. But more importantly, Jamie told me, you don't want to rely on scoring in the half court in this league, Rich. You have to find ways to score easily. Toussaint. Way off on the three. Offensive rebound, Darian Williams. Great hands by Darian Williams. He's had a great week of basketball. Can't get that one to go in the paint. And a veteran move by Jameer Nelson Jr. Throwing that off at te Texas Tech Red Raider. The coolest thing about this game tonight is every single play from the tip has been contested. Take a look right here. It's like dodgeball. Right. I thought we were watching dodgeball. Who was that? It, the dodgeball movie. If, if you can dodge a wrench, <laughs> you can dodge a ball. <laughs> Don't tell Darian Williams that. Here's Mustafa. He's got a season high 10 already. Crafty. Now with 10 on the shot clock. O'Bannon from the corner. That's and it his looks face. Like, yeah, O'Bannon was fouled. Well, we've got an ACC SEC Wednesday college basketball doubleheader coming up on ESPN in the app. Kyle Filipowski and number eight Duke taking on Miami at 7 Eastern. Then Antonio Reeves and number 17 Kentucky squaring off against LSU at the Maravich Center in Baton Rouge. When anytime Charles O'Bannon shoots from that left corner, Rich, and he's done it a lot in his career. I think back to that TCU win at Baylor a couple, oh, I think last year, right? Absolutely. Mike Miles going coast to coast, kicking it to Chuck. Young man who started his career at USC. Bunch of injuries. Of course, O'Bannon, a famous name in SoCal. Dad and uncle won a national championship for Jim Herrick. Eddie and Charles O'Bannon. Made all three free throws at the line. Call that the old man and the three. <laughs> Well, he's definitely an old man in this league. <laughs> 25 years young, Chuck O'Bannon. And this ties the largest lead of the game until Kyron Lindsay does away with that. TCU does a great job of spreading the court. It's oh, Jameer man. Nelson time. Wow. Wow, how about Jameer? 
Rich, he was only shooting 27% from behind the arc on the season. Now, he's a proven scorer, but man, is he on fire. Williams loves that spot on the floor. Did you say on fire? Heat check, and Avery Anderson's got a new season high. Great shot making on both ends. That one left short by Toussaint. Look at him run. First double digit lead of the night. And Grant McCaslin senses it's a danger zone. Thought he might call timeout. They're going to let him play on. He's got a TV timeout coming, which is why he's not using that timeout. 15 and 11 for Emmanuel Miller. Nice pass. Williams measured it up, couldn't get it to go, and they're going to get a foul on Mustafa. We have a timeout on the floor. A 10-point lead feels like 20 in a game like this. 7.24 to go. This time belongs to those who want it most, the rivals. Okay, Purdue loses at Ohio State. UConn loses tonight. So what's that tell us? Tells us we're going to have a wide-open NCAA tournament. There you go. Now they lost at a tough place, UConn. I love Danny Hurley's team. But anybody can get beat this year. That's much, that much we know. And Creighton, very much like BYU in the Big 12, they live and sometimes die by the three-pointer. Defense has not been at their strength this year, but they can really put the ball in the basket. Big stretch now. Next three minutes for T Texas Tech. Got to get some stops. Been unable to do that because of the guy with the ball in his hands, Nelson. Look at that defense by Lindsey. And he's leading the break now for Tech. Williams out to Walton. Oh, great fake. Look at his speed. Shot out of a cannon. Wow. Avery Anderson and, and Jameer Nelson. They're, this is what I mean by co-pilots. One guy takes a break, goes to the bathroom in the plane. The other guy's <laughs> kind of, he's going to get that um, TV dinner they serve you. The other guy's flying the plane. And that was a tip ball, so no backcourt violation. Tech needs a bucket down 10. Nice. And they get it from an unlikely source. Well, we keep talking about that speed of TCU for good reason. They lead the country in these plays. Look at this run out. PV gets rewarded because of that speed by Avery Anderson. You know what I love about TCU, Rich? Those big guys run not knowing they're going to get it. They fly down the floor. And then this young man at the foul line, Kyron Lindsay, what a night he's having. Sophomore from Denton. This week, full of, full of guys from Denton. Jacoby Cole, certainly. This TCU roster stacked with guys from the Metroplex. Lindsay, a left-hander at the free throw line. That's the second time he's had a chance at a three-point play, and he couldn't convert, but he still has eight. And the TCU lead is eight. They call, the, they call this, this is four out. They play with Mustafa inside, four players out, now pick and roll. Anderson had that shot bothered. Five on four if they push. Pop. A one-man fast break. And he's in double digits. They're going to get Darian Williams, and that's his fourth. And that is not a deep bench right now for Grant McCaslin. 
Watch this now. Coming at you. Pop takes it right into Mustafa. Mustafa holds his ground with some verticality. Little contact, and Pop plays right through it. One of the smallest guys in the Big 12, but he doesn't play like it. 6-2, a buck 80, going in amongst the trees. Five and a half to go. TCU led by as many as 10. They're up by six now. And an unforced error over the outstretched arms of Emmanuel Miller. 12 TCU turnovers. Fran, what would you like to see the Red Raiders do offensively? Yeah, just keep, keep keep moving the ball. You got a little pick and roll action here. They ran what we call a Spain pick and roll, which is screen the screener. Look at this move. Lindsay left hand. My goodness. <laughs> Inspector Gadget would have liked that one. Nelson looked good off his hand. High rebound. Taken away by Lindsay. Well, Lindsay, Lindsay's fatigued, but watch this move by the sophomore. Watch him extend that left arm away from him. He sees he's got Mustafa pressuring him. What? Right by him. And then to the outside of his body. Watch how far out this ball goes. Look, you know what that reminded me of? Michael Beasley. Yeah. Played at Kansas State. Michael Beasley right there. Skip pass. Nelson. Off the mark. Offensive rebound. Mustafa. He threw it up. And will go to the line. He did a great job of sealing on the backside. When that shot comes from the corner, about 70% of the time, it's going to bounce opposite, and he carved out position. Watch him get to the other side. This is terrific job by the big fella. And then draws the contact. Lindsay's fatigued right now. Fran, this has been a night of unsung heroes. Kyron Lindsay for Texas Tech and Isam Mustafa for TCU, although Mustafa misses the first of two free throws. Mustafa had four points last week against Kansas State. That was his first points since January 10th against Oklahoma. He missed them both. And the crowd once again has become a factor. Lindsey, can he do it again? Not that time. Coming up on four minutes left. Watch them play through Mustafa now. Everybody's moving. Wild shot by Mustafa. Out of bounds. And they're saying it's Texas Tech Not basketball? Yet. Not yet. No, it will stay TCU basketball. Well, we believe there's a timeout on the floor with 3.55 to go, but the lights just... This is Tech when BYU came in here. Remember, he was hurt that day. Yeah. And he is a very good player, a transfer from Detroit, from upstate New York. That's a very good BYU team. Look at his shot. Tennyson, he struggled all night. Lindsey, another rebound. Kyron Lindsey has seven rebounds and eight points tonight. Great hands by Peavy. Frogs, fast break. Miller, no! The pace has been frenetic in the second half. Here's Pop. Got to the rim, got fouled by Miller. He'll go to the line. Well, I'll tell you, Pop Isaacs is not 100%. The shot's not falling. He is an ultra competitor. He's going to step to the line. He's played a lot of minutes tonight. Watch the speed. Coles reaches in, grabs it. And then there's another little body action by Miller. He'll shoot two. You average 16 a game as a sophomore this league. You're pretty good. Five for six from the line tonight for Pop Isaacs. 11 points as Tennyson goes to the bench. 
Again, things opening up at the top half of this Big 12 standings if Baylor ends up losing that game. Remember, TCU beat Baylor in triple overtime. Miller, no. PV, yes. And Isaacs is down, helped up by Lindsey. Well, this is a small Texas Tech team right now. Lindsey's the five man. Toussaint. He should kick it out. But that's okay, too. So now Joe Toussaint will go to the line. Texas Tech leads the Big 12 in free throw shooting. And tonight they're right on track, 79% with one of their best free throw shooters at the stripe. You know, Rich, Toussaint, excuse me, Ude not playing tonight, right? He only takes two shots a game. Warren Washington has become not only a great defensive player, but they've been able to throw the ball into him when he's been healthy this year, so not having him tonight is a big loss. Joe Toussaint, always the first Red Raider on the floor to get shots up. It pays off there with two free throws, and it's a two-point game. Anderson, short. Red Raiders can tie it up. Isaacs. Williams! They're knotted up at 71. So loud in here you couldn't even hear the whistle call. Well, here's what I like about that play. Jamie Dixon ran an ISO play for PV, and I think it was Pop Isaacs who was guarding him, but created a, a gap in the post, and he got him right to the rim. Now, Micah, not a great foul shooter. 59% coming in. Now tennis into the bench for Jamie Dixon. Avery Anderson back on the floor. Defense offense right there. Two shots for Mike Peavy. You know, it's not the first time Mike Peavy shot on this basket, Rich, because he started his career right here as a, re as a freshman for Chris Beard. Of course, you know him better now for what he's done at TCU the last three. He had 18 points the last time these teams met. Looking for point number eight tonight, and he's got it. Big. Both teams good from the free throw line. TCU 14 for 17. Texas Tech 17 for 21. Coming up on two minutes to go in a two-point TCU lead. Bounce pass, Williams! What a find by Joe Tucson. PV no, out of bounds, Texas Tech basketball. Watch this last play at the other end, Emmanuel Miller gets caught watching the paint dry. Cut right behind. Finished by Lindsay. I'd say biggest possession of the game right here for Texas Tech. They've been uphill all second half. To your point, Fran, they led 40-38. They scored the first bucket of the second half, and TCU has led ever since.
We know these two guys in the backcourt fearless. Yeah, and I would trust them. I wouldn't trust throwing it to Lindsay yet. Isaacs. Got it! He's not going to count it. Jerry Pollard says no basket. So Pop Isaacs will go to the line and shoot a one and one instead. In the NBA, this would have been good. He's got to be in his upward shooting motion. There's the contact, and that's a good call. This crew, Rich, you know me, I've been a little bit harsh in the last couple weeks about some of the physicality. You couldn't ask for a better. Now, I don't want to jinx these guys. You got a minute and a half. But this is as good as you can officiate a game like this. Every play in this game tonight, there have been collisions. Fran, I'm watching these guys line up along the foul line, and there are collisions in the <laughs> lane now. I know it. They're not even playing. Isaacs gets the front end of the one. There are no fifth and sixth place teams in any conference in America that are going to play harder than these two teams. If Texas Tech wins, they leapfrog over the Horn Frogs and move into fourth place. In you want to look at who he's matched up with. And this is a good matchup for him because Coles is not a one-on-one -on -one player. Peavy drives the lane. And a foul is called. Peavy got by Pop Isaacs and Lindsey came over. And PV's going to shoot two. He made the last two, but not necessarily his strength. I love this kid. Watch, watch him since his freshman year. You want him on your team, any team. Had a triple double earlier this year against Arizona State. Coming off a 26-point effort in the win at Kansas State. But it's money time, and he missed the first free throw. And now we see the same substitution that we saw moments ago from Jamie Dixon with Tennyson off and Anderson on. Offense, defense. In this case, defense for offense. <laughs> off on both. But it's got back by Coles. Jacoby Coles with a monster putback. We told you that he might have some uh, ability to power over Lindsey. And he got it done on the free throw line. One minute to go. Tie ball game for the 11th time tonight. Pick and roll. Pick the screener. Let's watch. A lot of action in there. Got to space it out so they can drive. Miller guarding Tucson. He found Pop. Pop and one. Let's go back and watch the intensity on the foul line on the other end. Watch Coles go to work and just wills this ball into the basket. And I'll tell you, what a cut by Pop Isaacs. Toussaint's in trouble. And watch Pop cut to the basket. And then to be able to finish through contact, what a play by that backcourt. One of the toughest son of a guns in the Big 12, if not the country, Pop Isaacs. Completes the three-point play. And it's a three-point tech lead. Nine-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Peavy in the paint. Gets fouled again and will go to the line. The strategy there was we don't need a contested three. Let's get to the basket. And now Micah, who went two for two, then 0 oh for two, is going to have to step to the line here and cut into this lead. Twenty nine point four to go both teams in the bonus one timeout remaining for both as well nice and That job. one's good. Yeah, good job by PV. You remember what we said the first couple plays of this game How intense it was and we said it's probably not gonna let up. I think it's it's exceeded my expectations You're telling me these are the fifth and sixth best teams in the Big 12? Well, they're well coached. They play with great intensity. And they they play very egoless. Both teams do. 
Peavy to make it a one-point game. And he does. Big time free throws. Now you got to press. You have plenty of time to trap more than once. And then you need to foul at some point. Remember how good a foul shooting team Texas Tech is. Shot clock is off. 25 seconds left. Tucson almost lost it. Timeout. And a timeout called. Now, here's what happened. You know what? He's a, he's the officer on the beat, which is, which is what he was. Watch the long ball. Here's Toussaint. And the reach in by Anderson will send Joe Toussaint to the free throw line. It's not a bad foul. Joe is a very good foul shooter. Nearly 87%. But they're going to force him to make. You know what I like about this for TCU? They can still keep fouling. If Joe makes both, they still can go down and score. If he misses just one, it's a win for TCU. Tucson, three for three from the stripe tonight. Jacoby Cole steps back in. Remember, we mentioned earlier how dominant Texas Tech is at home, 13-1 and one this year. They almost lost to Kansas State were it not for Joe Tucson's heroics, a three-point play at the end of that game to win it. Kids from the Bronx are not supposed to be good foul shooters because they grow up playing outdoors with no nets. This guy, nearly 90%. And those double rims as well. Exactly. Metal backboards. Oh, man. I'm on a high right now. And look at this. I mean, this officiating crew. Well, here's what's happening. I don't whether clock. I, Anderson's going to. He can come back in and. and uh, for some reason, they're not letting him check back in. And I thought the clock ran, was running. Okay. Don't two need, can't them both. Don't need a three still. Plenty of time for the two. Nelson. Coles. All alone. Okay. That's good. If you're TCU, you like that. They have dotted their I's and crossed their T's tonight. Five-second call approaching. They get it in. And a foul on Peavy. Okay. That was close because there were no timeouts left. Now both teams are in the bonus, so Pop Isaacs is going to have two free throws. Isaacs, 9 for 10 tonight from the free throw line. What's at stake again? If Texas Tech wins, they leapfrog over TCU and move into sole possession of fourth place in the Big 12. A really good team is going to have a is going to come out of this game with a loss. And still plenty of time for more dramatics. No question. Pop is pure. He he's as tough as they come in this league. Fifth in the conference in scoring, 16.4 a game. He has 18 tonight against TCU. If it's a three-point game, you still do not take it. You need to take a three, but you've got to get it up the court fast. And that's exactly what it is. The lead is three. Ten seconds to go. Here's Nelson. He hit a game winner against Kansas State. Now he's going to shoot a three. Trying to tie it. It's short. Coles got it back. 1.4 left, a one-point game. And Jamie Dixon wanted to travel on Pop Isaacs. Time runs out. And they're saying that's it. Handshakes are being exchanged on the floor.